I really hope it stays and doesn't like this stuff. Are you gonna go on this side or? Yeah, I can probably this. Here. This. This ish. Just centering. It's centering. This is a thing. Um, Are we already filming? I I put it on oh, filming. Just move this over. Okay, yeah. We're gonna move our our that wine glasses is full of chai. Because we're underage. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back to our channel. This is Butter. Hi, Butter. We are in my kitchen right now. Why are we in my kitchen, Maggie? Why are we? We are going to eat a pineapple. Yes, we are. We're going to eat a pineapple and talk about menstruation. Whip. I can't whip with you in my hand. Huh. It has come to our attention that you can actually eat a pineapple without having to dice it up. According to Twitter. According right? to Twitter. According to Twitter. So, the little notches in a pineapple, we all know what a pineapple looks like. You can apparently just take them and, and rip them out and just eat them. So, we're going to attempt to do that and then we're going to talk about menstruation help. Mm -hmm. So, let's get started. Um, we've already decapitated our pineapple. It took a lot more work than you think when you're mm -hmm. just ripping it off. What should we call this segment? Pineapples and fruit, fruit of the womb. Fruit of the fruit womb! Of, fruit of the womb! Yes! Yes! Okay! Okay! Okay, let's do this! Alright! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay! We love this! Okay. How do we begin? Okay! We probably need a knife to start the process. Do you have a knife and a... I have many more. knives. We should do a segment like this consistently, like called Fruit of the Womb. Fruit of the Womb! We should eat fruits and talk about women's health. I love that. I actually think that that would be like really fun if you are so annoyed. I would love nothing more. My two favorite things, fruit, fruit, fruit friendship and, and pheromones. Feminism. Fem yes. Ah! Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Do you want to cut? Sure. I can't be trusted. All right. This is iced okay. tea because we're underage. We are now going to attempt. An attempt is going to be made. Fruit. Ooh. Twitter lied. Twitter. 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 I can't trust Twitter. I can't trust Twitter. I can, I can like feel it wanting to do it, but it's it's, 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 it's not. So That's yeah. We have a lot of serious yes. knives. Okay. It's like so hard. This is this is a time pain. Um, it looks so easy on Twitter. Oh yeah, the girl on Twitter just just yeah. She was like she was like, whoopa pineapple. See, these are the practical life skills that we should that be, we should be like, learning. We should learn about eating pineapple the right way. And right. Also, how to not cut your how to not cut off. your fingers off. And also actual sex, like comprehensive sex education. This is true. Yep. It's a little numb. Good pineapple. I might not have cut enough. Uh, bloop, enough. Cut enough. You can like, drink that. We got our second nub. Would you like to try the second nub? I would love to nub? try the second nub. Mmm. They're good pies, bro. Oh, God, that's good. Okay. 74%. So, now. <laughs> like, you like to really get the pineapple going, and then yeah. you just be like, all right, now that we have the pineapple. All right, here's the tea. Let's sit here. Oh, here's the tea. Here's the tea. Here's the tea. Here's the tea. The Vagilan teas. teas. Cheers. Cheers. And that's good too. They made it look so easy. I know Twitter was just. I can't. Oh my gosh! I can't believe I. Don't, I can't trust something on Twitter. Okay. It's right. But now you can. Like, you just kind of like twist it. I think. Oh, it helps to twist. Oh, 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 oh! Revel revelation. <laughs> we're making a mess. Oh yeah, we're making a total mess. But, I don't know. This is this is less messy than normal. Oh, oh! Yeah, See, the lower right the lower you get, oh, the better yeah. it gets. I think we have like reusable straws. Have you ever stuck a straw in a coconut? I have not. Have you? We went, we went to the beach one time and Jamie found a coconut on the beach and we just stuck a straw in it. He stuck a straw into it and he drank it. Was it delicious? I had some. It was pretty good. It was good? Yeah, it was like the coconut water you get at the store. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Heck. Oh. <gasps> oh, did it work? The Holy Grail! Oh my gosh! Oh. Wait. Yes! This! Yes! Oh yes! Yes! This is the good content. This is what we were looking for. Twitter did not lie. No. 
I, I rebuke myself from my earlier <laughs> statement. My previous I rescind statement. my previous statement. I learn more on Twitter than I do in, like, in, in life, formal in formal education. Verdict? Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Approved. Wonderful. Vagilantes approved. I should be, it's not here, but she approves it too. Mm. She has a dress with pineapples on it. That is true. Oh wait, the iconic pineapple dress. It's in the video. This is like a magic wand that I can just like use to put things in the screen. Like wah, wah, wah. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. So now that we know it worked, I think that this is probably a great time to just sit and eat pineapple and start talking about our topic for this, this video. This sounds like a great idea. Okay, so. Pineapples. Why pineapples? Well, today we're going to be talking about menstruation and we thought that it would be fun to tie this pineapple in. So something that I just learned is that there's this protein in pineapple called brolamine. It can reduce certain side effects from menstruation. So it can reduce things such as bloating and really, really bad cramps. Cheers. I am currently on day 31 of my menstrual cycle. Ooh. Um, I know. Are you serious? It'd be like that. Yes. Oh, have you seen it before? What? Have no. you seen it in your phone? No? No, why? You're... Oh! Oh! I thought you meant that you were like, actually... No! Oh, days. No, 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 no! I had tried I was like, oh... So I... Am... I was so scared, I was like, So I'm experiencing PMS right now! I am sorry to hear that. That is I've been bleeding never... for 31 days. Yes. If you have been bleeding for, for 31 30 months, for... Please, please consult a gynecologist. Talk to Please someone. talk to a medical professional. Any medical professional. Okay. <laughs> that, that's our plug. That's, that's our the whole point of yep. this. That's, is, that was why. This that's, is a PSA. Yes. PSA for the PMS. Okay. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Might want to cut that off. <laughs> when did you start your period? Um, I started my period when I was a freshman in high school. Really? Yes. Wow. Um, okay. Which is pretty late. Um, I'm very young for my grade, late. though. It's not Oh wait. It's not that late. How old are you? Um, 13? I was... 14? I was 13. Okay, that's like when not... I started my birthday. Actually, I was 14. I was 14 because I had my birthday. Um, after that's that happened. Considered. I think anything after 16 so, is, is, considered is considered late. Late, um, but it's right. not a cause for right. It's not a cause for concern. concern. Uh, lots of uh, females start menstruating late, uh, whether it's genes or things like that. But lots yeah. of the time, it can be if you're a particularly active female. That's I know. True. I know several people who were gymnasts or mm -hmm. dancers. And when your body is undergoing a lot of physical stress, your reproductive system essentially tells mm -hmm. you, hey, um, I don't think that we are in the proper conditions and I don't think that we are fully ready to prepare to potentially reproduce. And so your body just kind of puts that on the back burner and says we need to worry about repairing bones as you're putting right, them yeah. under a lot of force, repairing muscles as you put them under a lot mm -hmm. of force. So your body just kind of says, hey, we're going to worry about this later. Um, and that isn't necessarily a bad thing. I know people right. who did gymnastics or dance for many, many years, mm -hmm. and as soon as they stopped doing it all the time, their body decided, hey, we're not under all this stress anymore. It's yeah. time for us to start menstruating. Um, that being said, it can sometimes be potentially, I say, I say harmful, but um, lots of females do not start their period if they have undergone that much stress and they continually go through it throughout all of pu puberty, mm -hmm. um, they will never get their period. Uh, so it just varies from person to person. That's true. And also, you can lose your period for many mm -hmm. of, you can lose your period for all kinds of reasons, temporarily. Yes. Um, stress, not eating well, any kind of hormonal imbalance. Mm -hmm. um, I actually lost my period for a year when I was... 13? 14? When did you first get your period? I got my period when I was 11 years old. Okay. That's I got it. I remember the exact date. I got it on October 20th, 2011, but then I didn't tell anyone for a tour a day because I was like, I was really scared. And so I actually told my mom on the 21st and I was like, ah, what do I do? I don't know. I got it when I was, um, I remember where I was too. I was in, I remember where I was. Yeah. Where were you? Yeah. Um, I got mine in December. I think it was December 16th. Um, oh, no, 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 maybe not December 16th. It was, I think, November 16th. November 16th. Um, of my freshman year of high school. And I remember I was in my band class and we had yeah. the day off because our band director was off going and doing something, but we still had class. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was basically just a free period. We, we, you know, did all of our homework for other classes and stuff there. And I remember getting up, 
going to the bathroom. I remember what I wore. I remember I was wearing a black long maxi skirt. So it was fine. I didn't have to worry about it. Yeah, that's, that's like ideal, period, ideal which yes, period attire. Which is ideal period attire. That's so your, you knew. I, something. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember having to, to, you know, just go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And I went to the bathroom. And I, as I went to the bathroom, I passed by some people that I knew um, on my way out of the room. Mm-hmm. And I stopped and chatted for a couple minutes. And they were working on their homework. And I remember going to the bathroom and I started my period and I was just thinking to myself, I remember my stomach kind of dropped and I was like, yeah. what do I do? Yeah. Oh my goodness, I don't have anything mm. on me. I have nothing prepared. I don't right. know what I can do. Um, and so I just kind of, you know, just didn't, I didn't know what to do until I got home and I told my mom and she was like, here, take these things for right. you to school tomorrow so that you can be prepared. But um I don't honestly remember what I did. It was so long ago. It was four years. So I, uh, I think I either went back and asked those people that I saw if mm-hmm. they had, you know, a pad or a tampon or anything. But I might have just been too embarrassed and just didn't ask. Yeah. Um. I I genuinely can't remember. But either option would not surprise me if you mm-hmm. were to tell me that you know, hey, this is actually what you did. I would probably just be like, yeah, that's not surprising. Did were you expecting it? Like, did you kind of know the the uh like the mechanisms of menstruation and what to expect and that it was that it was normal and healthy or did you like go ah what's happening um i i knew what to expect i remember my mother uh she was the one who gave me an actual helpful um education on menstruation uh she told me she said maggie whenever you start your period uh not always but lots of the time before you start with really heavy, you know, like blood and uterine material, mm-hmm. you might get, you know, a little spotting or something that just like looks really dark and like brownish. <clears throat> uh, she said you, it's very, very likely that you might see that. And if you do see that, then that probably means you're going to start soon. Yeah. In my case, when I started my first period, I didn't get that. And it was just full fledged. Yeah. And just, it's just, whoosh, whoosh, and I was just like, <laughs> oh my gates. goodness. My mother taught me, really advocated for things, even just like, if you have a tampon, um, also having like panty liners and stuff like that, just re- recognizing that not all period products are the same. Uh, lots of people prefer pads or panty liners and things like that. Other people prefer tampons, menstrual cups, things like that. So just knowing that there's different options out there based on what is best for you and your body. Mm. What happened with you? I, like when I got my period? Yeah. I was in fifth grade. I would have been in fifth grade because it was 2011, mm-hmm. I think. I have to do my math again on that one. I, on my way to art class, I think, and I stopped in the bathroom, same story, I looked down, and I was like, Ah, and so I like got yeah. some toilet paper and I like rolled it up yeah. and made like a temporary pad. The next day, I told my mom and I was like, and I was so scared. I don't know why. Right now, it's like, like a fearful. Moment. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. I was like, I don't it's know, the first I was time you're serious, right? But like, but over, but that first time, it's so it's it's funny looking back now because mm-hmm. I was like, oh gosh, I was so scared, and now. Like yesterday, yeah. my mom was like, oh, I wouldn't have my uterus taken out. And I was like, oh, LOL, same. <laughs> I think that's really, really healthy. Especially if you have other people who menstruate in your household. And the fact that she was so supportive throughout my entire life. I knew what was happening to me. When I got my period, I was like, oh, okay. So I have started, I have begun menstruating. Mm-hmm. I had read the books about it. And I grew up in a household full of medical professionals who like left like all of these medical materials lying around. My mom had talked to me about it beforehand being like, one day you're gonna, right. you're gonna look down and you're gonna happen. be like, um, yes. so you're not dying. Mm-hmm. My mom didn't get any of that. Her mom, my grandma, didn't tell her like anything. She didn't have any resources, she didn't have any materials, she didn't have any books. So she thought she was dying. <laughs> and she was 10 years old and she told me the story and she flipped out. And she was like, oh my gosh, mom, I'm dying. Like I'm bleeding out of my vagina. Like what's happening? Mm-hmm. And then my grandma had to kind of explain it to her. I'm very thankful that I had the resources to know what was going on and how to deal with it. If I thought that the sex education that I got was poor to say the least. At least I had resources at home. I had people who were were relatively open about talking about at least the medical aspects of maturation and menstruation and reproduction. My mom's sex ed was when she was being dropped off at college. My grandma said, you know Jenna, guys like girls with big boobs. 
And that was it. That was like, that was, that was, it. that was the alpha and the omega of her sex education until wow. and at college. My mother was very helpful and she definitely provided a lot of good guidance. Way before I even got my period, I remember her telling my sister and a few other really, really, really close family friends who are basically my sisters about menstruation and she taught us while fully clothed, demonstrated like how to properly put a tampon in because really? I had no idea how. Oh, and that so was helpful. that was a huge terror oh, thing for me. Really good. Okay. Um, I have friends who do not use tampons at all and that is obviously everyone's that is I, I personal, don't like them. I don't know that why. Is personal choice to I'm every comfortable. Every person who menstruates that is their personal choice and you absolutely do not have to. I know people who don't wear tampons because it's uncomfortable, but I also yeah. know people who don't wear tampons because they have no idea how to put them in. Period products don't come with instructions because they assume that you know everything. Mm -hmm. I remember scouring over the tampon box trying to figure out how to properly put it in and I couldn't find any instructions. Yeah. I realized, wow, the only person who's taught me how to do this is my mother. If you hadn't had that. If I hadn't had if that, had then I... grown up in a family that was, you know, knowledgeable and relatively open about right. these things, then... How, how would you, you have known? known? Yeah. Right, and it's a valid question, you know, how do you put in a tampon? That's a very valid question to ask because it's not something that is honestly often taught in sex education. My sex education yeah. at the lower levels, yeah. nothing like that was brought up. We did not talk about things like that. Um, we didn't either. It was whether just very it was, theoretical. Yeah, very and, theoretical, you know. Yeah. Was, we used, there were a lot of like euphemisms, I remember. Mm -hmm. It was never like, okay, so here's the vagina, and here's the vulva, and the vulva has these has these components to it. It was always like, okay, so this is the female reproductive system, and it always and it had like the uterus and like the fallopian tubes, and then like grayed out between the legs, so you never saw a vagina. Right. You never saw a vulva. You never saw a labia. You never saw like any actual female genitals. And it was it was all about the internal systems, which is super important. Right. But that's as very far as to know, but as far as practical knowledge goes, you, that's only it's a it's a small part of the picture because you have to know what's happening externally I mean, yes, and the absolutely. actual mechanisms of mm -hmm. taking care of your body. I didn't receive that formal training. Mm -hmm. uh, Formal training. For, I say Honestly, training. I mean, they yeah, should be I like mean, condom demonstrations. Yes, like, I never they got like condom demonstrations. They didn't even yeah. talk about contraception. They didn't talk about sex even. Mm -mm. We're trying to make it not be like We're that. We're trying to make it not be <laughs> like that. It is a process. Yes. A long, arduous process. Even just saying proper terms and terminology is yeah. really important. I remember when I was in my eighth grade health science, this is probably my most useful year of reproductive education as a whole. I had a teacher and on the very first day she said, okay, we are not going to use any kind of slang terms or right. derogatory terms yeah. to describe anything about genitalia or things like that. We're not going to say that. We are going to call things by their titles and we are going to say them whether you're uncomfortable with it. Or not. That's what my mom did as well. She was like, yep, that's your vagina. And then when I was two, I was like, okay, cool. This is my vagina. I know what this is called. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, but there, there were people in, when I, even when I was in middle school, there were people who were like, I, I literally like don't know what what any of these holes are. Yeah. <laughs> I don't right. know what they're called. No. And yeah. like, there are still people, I, I, have, I have met people in college who think that people with vaginas pee out of their vaginas. You don't. You pee out of the urethra, just so we're clear. We are we not, not, not the same hole. Not the same hole. Uh, another thing that I think no. is really important is that my brother's got the same home reproductive education That's that really I did. important. And so yeah. I have one older brother and one younger brother. Mm -hmm. I think it was me and Paul, my older brother, who like sat down together and we were kind of taught, walked through the same curriculum mm -hmm. of, okay, this is the female reproductive, reproductive system, this is the male reproductive system, this is all about contraception. Um, hooray! Jamie, my younger brother, kind of grew up in an environment where people had these fairly open conversations and where everyone kind of knew about the female reproductive system. And so now there are people in his class who like don't know about menstruation, reproduction, or female genital health. And he's like, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. That's, that's really, really important. But it's, it's really good. If you physically understand kind of how someone's body works, maybe it stands to reason that you're able to empathize or, or sympathize a little bit with, with mm -hmm. what they go through. That is something that I'm really thankful for in my household. I'm gonna eat more of this pineapple. Oh, we have more. Uh, oh, oh yeah! Oh my goodness. This we is the good content. Root of the womb.
Here we are absolutely like, please put destroying me out of my misery. it. But like, it does it. Getting back to it the does. pineapple. If you were wondering. The actual point of this video. It does it. Wait, Twitter wait. actually didn't lie. Twitter came through for us, mm -hmm. as always. Can you track your menstrual cycle? Oh. Um, I've tried before, mm -hmm. but I often don't have a super regular menstrual cycle. Yeah, That's another thing. Either. That's another thing um, that I think is really important to talk about is that lots of people who menstruate take birth control even if they're not sexually active they take it to often regulate their periods that's true i guess that that's just a really important thing to, that mm -hmm. we should bring up is that that's true. If, if you have that's true. <laughs> is that um if you are someone who menstruates and has really really sporadic periods if you have really really heavy painful symptomatic periods definitely go talk to your gynecologist or even just a general practitioner when in doubt just when in doubt, when in doubt see see a medical medical professional. Professional. lots of the time birth control is actually a really really good option for for helping regulate your hormones and helping oh sorry <laughs> helping regulate your hormones and regulating your periods um you do not have to be sexually active to take birth control there's also a lot of stigma around being sexually active i think mm -hmm. as a whole i know that in my sex education that i received it was pretty much entirely um abstinence only yeah, um, that's and really well, common, especially in the South. Right. Um, well, I personally do choose to abstain from sex for a, a multitude of um, reasons. <laughs> um, well, both, you know, well, both of us do Free choose. School. <laughs> well, we both do choose to abstain from sex for um, it's entirely for lots personal of reasons. reasons. Every person is a person. This is true. I was given, I don't know what you were given, I was given a very general education on abstinence is the only way to not get these things. Abstinence it's, is not a method of birth control. Right. Um, is, that is a quote from a public health lecture that came to my public health mm -hmm. seminar. She works in uh, treatment of various STIs. I think her main one was, I think it was HPV actually. There was in, like, a certain population in North Carolina. We were like mentioning methods of birth control and someone said abstinence and she said not a method of birth control because right. it's not a, for some people it is a choice but it's kind of like, oh, like in the John, in the last week tonight sex ed video, they made a really good analogy, which was abstinence is like being a vegetarian. People should respect your choice. Some people might make fun of you. Those people are assholes. Yes. <laughs> That's the tea. That's the tea. You have lots of ways to not get pregnant and to not get STIs. Yeah, if, so if you are a vegetarian, there are other ways to get protein. There are other ways to get protein. <laughs> I'm going to continue the analogy. Yes. If you do choose to be sexually active, please use proper public health safety content. Wrap it and tap it. Yes. We see the, the gyno wrap here. Um, <laughs> wrap it and tap it. It's going to be my new motto. We got a t-shirt. <laughs> It could refer to the pineapple. We're tapping the pineapple. It was wrapped in a bow. Oh, that was a chunk. It was a chunky boy. Chunk, I, was a, I was about <laughs> to say chunky boy. Absolute unit. <laughs> An app. Oh. <laughs> Can we end the video? Thanks for tuning into this episode of Fruit of the Womb. We'll be back <laughs> next time with, with more, more fruit and more with, wombs. With, <laughs> with more fruity fun. <laughs> Is that too much? I, don't, I think all of this is too much. All of this is- this entire channel is a lot. Is a lot. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Fruit of the Womb. We'll be back next time with more fruity fun. G-Y-N-E-C-O-L-O-G-Y It's a misunderstood field of study So I'm gonna debunk some myths about the vulva and hymen Show you all who's the real O-G-G-Y-N We'll be back next time with more fruity fun. <laughs> Should we end this? I think that that's probably. Okay. Wait, I have to get down. <laughs> okay.